that moves us into the Big 12, where playoff talks are, not playoff, expansion talks are picking up uh, rather quickly. The Athletic is reporting that BYU, UCF, Cincinnati, and Houston are going to be the four that the Big 12 goes after. And if they do that, that is going to completely gut the AAC. So I'm hopeful yeah. it doesn't happen, but I also understand. Cincinnati, UCF, and Houston are members of the American Athletic Conference. It requires 27 months' notice and a $10 million penalty for departing members. So if they are going to do this... Somebody's going to come up with $30 million. Yes, and and Houston, uh, Fertitta, like he'll be able to figure this out. So that, that won't be an issue, I don't believe. But the 27 months' notice... Like, they kind of need to figure out, okay, when are we going to let Texas and Oklahoma leave? When will that actually happen? And and I'm betting that they can come up with some kind of a deal at the end of this season and say, okay, in two years or whatever. My, my best bet at this point is that it will be 2023 when Texas and Oklahoma join. So is that going to leave one season where – they do not get to where they've only got eight teams and the AAC just stays packed. Because remember, Maryland did this. They announced they were leaving back in like 2011 and it was 2014 before they played in the Big Ten. So yeah. I, I'm curious how this is all going to work timeline wise, right? I mean, that's how that's how these contracts work, though. So I don't I don't worry about that. I wouldn't if I'm the Big 12, I don't let I don't let Texas or Oklahoma out one second earlier than I have to. I mean, because yes, every year they're there, you're you're getting far more money for all of the games that the Big Twelve would normally not get. So you either make ESPN pay you, or you make Texas and Oklahoma pay you to get the hell out early, or you sit and you collect those checks as long as they're willing to stay. I wouldn't negotiate. I wouldn't take one cent less. If they owe me $125 million, I wouldn't take $124 million and, and 99 cents. I wouldn't take it. Yeah, I wouldn't give yeah. them one break. Now, there was a little talk about Houston, and we actually talked about this on the show before, where, you know, the, the Fertitta brother, that, that handles this, and I forget which one it is, the UFC guy, the guy that handles all that, yep. he seemed to ruffle some feathers with the Big 12 in the past. And they have basically come together and said, you know what, it will be best for us to put politics aside and bring Houston in as a member if we are going to maintain this Big 12 conference, if we're going to maintain a Power 5 status. And I kind of tend to agree. Like I thought it might oh, make no. I, I thought it might make more sense for Memphis to come in instead of Houston because you've already got a Texas footprint. But you don't care about that. I Listen, think you don't. I, I want Memphis to be in because I love Memphis and because we're here. And I would love to see TCU come to Liberty Bowl. I would love to see these other schools come to Memphis and me not have to leave my house to go watch them play. But at the same time, the value of the alumni base. And the fan base of Memphis is a fraction of Houston. It, that, if you're just looking at the truth of the matter and, and, we're, and we're taking you know our biases off, Houston's just far more valuable. They just are. Absolutely. The, the only benefit you get of getting Memphis is you get balls deep in the SEC recruiting country. But I think once you get into Florida, you're fine. You don't. It, it doesn't. It, what you get in Memphis is so small compared to what you're going to get in Florida. And so I, I think you're okay taking the more valuable program, you know, in, in that trade, which I hate because that 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 means Memphis just becomes another also ran. I mean, they're just a nobody. Yeah, it it becomes a problem because it, at that point, does the AAC try and stay together and bring up like App State and yeah, somebody well, else? So like what has that? to happen is the best of the Sun Belt, the best of the AAC, and I even think you you jump on airplanes and you get the best of the Mountain West. And you try to form a twelve-team conference of the, and then you you now really are slaughtering the bottom feeders, the 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 small schools. You're really killing them. Yeah. If you can't compete, I, I take Conference USA. Some, I mean, I'm literally going and getting the top tier teams of basically the four remaining G5 conferences and trying to put a conference together that maybe once or twice in a blue moon can can show up and 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 
make make some noise. And I'll tell you this: that will have television value, no doubt. Because while they won't have a Clemson or an Alabama or an LSU, they won't have a big, big, big fish. People will, somebody will pay money to get those games on TV. If you have 12 teams and one of the worst teams, it will be a UAB or a Memphis some years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you can go out and get the the premier talent from the rest of the G5 and somehow form, you know, a one 12 team conference, and that means Memphis is going to have to go, South Florida is going to have to play Boise. That's just going to have to happen. Yeah. But look, they all drive fly pri- uh, private jets, charter jets anyway. It doesn't matter. So hop on a plane and and get the best games you can get, get the best contract you can get for yourself and be damned with the rest of it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.